Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep Tea and distracted <laughs> by Natalie. <laughs> and I'm Natalie. Uh, we're unwell. I just, I, yeah, <laughs> like I'm just going to set the stage right now. I'm hungover. <laughs> I'm so tired. I don't know why, why we decided to go out last night. We've had so many events this week. It's just been insane. Yeah, but it's been I think it's fun. I think we've been to like four events this week and just like also after these events, we like go out with our girlfriends <laughs> <laughs> and I have no, like I'm tired. My social battery is at like a negative five right now. Yeah. We're honestly. staying in this weekend. No, Plus, 100%. I need to pack. <gasps> oh, you want to tell them? Do you yeah, want to tell them? tell them? You okay. guys, I am a stalker. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I I toured so many buildings because I'm looking for a new place. And the best one is in Natalie's building. <laughs> yes, that is right. Yep. She's moving into my building because Woo! she is obsessed with me. I am so obsessed with Nat. You know, we'll be a healthy 12-ish, 14-ish floors away. So it's it's great. You're just far enough away where you're not close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, come I'm down those stairs. I'm going to take the stairs to your apartment. See, it's nice for you because I have to climb to get to yours. Oh, you have to come up. But yeah. we're so excited. Like, I cannot wait. I feel like we're yeah. going to cook a lot of dinners together. It's going to make yes. it so much easier to work on this podcast and us to, like, mm -hmm. ideate. Yep. I'm excited. Eek. I'm excited. I've never, It'll wait. be so fun. <laughs> I've never used that word before. ID8. ID8. I know. I was yeah. like, where'd you pull that what, off? <laughs> I don't know what came over me to use it, but <laughs> that college degree is being put to use. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I just shocked uh, myself. I was like, wow, that was in my vocabulary. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I'm just kidding. That was um, good. So what's new with you? Not much. I mean... <laughs> Uh, I went to a Cubs game yesterday. Was it yesterday? What day is it? That was no, day before we, yesterday. We were on a boat yesterday for that I, brand trip. I literally, all my days are bleeding together. It's been really tough this week. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> we're like, our lives are so hard as we go to like all these events with like free yeah. food and free drinks. We're like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. so difficult <laughs> to drink. <laughs> um, no, I went to the Cubs game. And uh, for our international listeners, Cubs is a Chicago sports team. It's baseball, um, kind of like cricket for my Indian listeners. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, anyway, so I was sitting in the bleachers, which is kind of like a first come, first serve, sit wherever you want type of situation. And I sat down next to this group of guys and the kid, I call him kid because he was 25. <laughs> it was so funny because he was so cute. Of course, he has a backwards hat on. So I'm instantly like, hello. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You in the backwards hat. Dude, I have, it's kryptonite to me. It's literally kryptonite. I know. But... Wait, wait. When we what? were out last night at the bars, yeah. any, any guy with a backwards hat, you're like, oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Is he my one? <laughs> We Dad, did like, go to freaking, a younger crowd. He's drinking your like cucumber martini, bitch. I was like, he's not your one. <laughs> hey, I didn't say he's either one. I was like, hmm, that could be my next ex, Mr. Rat. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I just do, I do. I'm kidding. I do find men with backwards hat very, very cute. I don't know what it is. But and I know a lot of our listeners out there agree with me on that. I know it Ooh. because I see the DMs, baby. <laughs> They do? My idea. Yeah, they're like, dude, that backwards hat, I get it. And I'm like, yes, yeah, see, thank you. Here's here's the thing about backwards hats. <laughs> here's the thing about backward hats. Here's the thing about backward hats. Why can't I say that? <laughs> I don't know backwards hats. <laughs> here's the thing about backward hats. Why does that sound so weird? That's what it is. Am you, I how saying say that? It? Yeah, backwards hat. I'm saying that. Backwards hat. Or is it backwards hat? It's I think you could go hat. either way. Okay. Speaking about those hats that you wear backwards. <laughs> <laughs> my, here's my thing. Why I'm not into it. Like if a guy with a backwards hat comes up to me, I'm like suspicious because I'm like, what are you hiding under there? Like a hat fishing situation? Yeah. Like, are you hiding a bad dye job under there? Are you hiding like maybe a bad haircut under there? Hmm. Maybe you're like, you know, got, you know, like, I'm just like iffy. Like, why are you wearing it? No, I mean, it, I wear hats when I, end. I wear Why are you hats. wearing it at a dark bar. <laughs> I wear hats when I don't feel like washing my hair. 
and I want to still go out. So what are you trying to say? <laughs> wow. So that's why you were wearing a hat like all four days. You went out. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Crazy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so dumb. I'm so dumb. Oh my gosh. But anyways, so this guy at the Cubs game, we just started chatting and he was like super into it. I don't know why, but he kept like tickling me on the side and just like, you know, being flirty. Wait, this was a random guy that this you was were just a random guy around? That, yeah, just sitting next to him. <laughs> and and I think he was trying to impress the boss's son because it was kind of like a work trip, work for him. Event. Like you don't for work him. with him. Okay. No, I, I don't work. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> But he was sitting next oh, to me and God. he was so cute. And I don't know, we just had really fun banter. And then um, towards the middle of the game, he looks over at me and goes, I really want to kiss you. Like, can I just like steal a kiss? And I was like, sir, Ew. there are so many people behind us. And a lot of them recognize me. There is no chance I am kissing you right now. And plus, you know, when you're wearing a hat, because I was wearing a hat and like, I was like, if I leaned in to kiss you, the hat would stop me. So it's kind of a cock block. So I can't. You're really... like, I can't take this hat off because I have oily hair underneath <laughs> it. You do not want to see <laughs> the hat hair right now. And I cannot take it off. And I oh literally said that to him oh, jokingly. And he goes, just turn it backwards and give me a kiss. And then I was like, absolutely not. Um, uh, wait, was he like really drunk? No, he wasn't drunk, but he was really cute, let me tell you. <laughs> well, you showed me a photo and he was really, really cute, but I didn't He's know the cute. full story. I don't like that he <laughs> said, can I steal you a kiss? Wait, what did he, he say? He said, he's like, can I just steal a kiss from you? <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> Why did I totally put that? I don't know. <laughs> it made no sense. I'm dead. <laughs> I think I'm so hungover and I'm so tired that like nothing. That's You're just delusional. That makes sense. Yeah, You're in that like, um, I'm like in that mood. <laughs> in that mood. I love that mood. Um, okay, uh, okay. Um, I kind of fun. hate that line. <laughs> I thought it was really cute. It's the way you say it. You know, he said it very sweetly. Okay, and, you say know. it. Say it how he said it. No, I'm not gonna say it. I don't know. I don't have his deep voice. You know. Okay. What did he I say again? Repeat voice, it back. Though. He just said, "Can I steal a kiss from you?" So he was like, can I steal a kiss from you? <laughs> can I steal a kiss from you? <laughs> and you were like, hell yes. I was like, well, hell no. Nah. <laughs> my hat is in the way, though. Is that what you said? <laughs> no, I was like, no. People are watching. And he goes, it's cute. It's fine. No one's going to notice. And I was like, my hat's in the way. <laughs> um, did he know you did Love is Blind? No. He doesn't oh. really he said he's not really big into social media or reality TV. So people who are into social media and reality TV are the first ones to say they're not into social media and reality <laughs> TV. I even I even say I'm not into reality TV and I straight up was on a reality TV show. I'm always like, what? I never watch. You know, I yeah. haven't watched it uh since the first time. I uh, maybe I'll watch I'm just it. Again. Kidding. I've only watched it. I think I've only watched it once and I, well, actually I watched my wedding episode twice because I missed the scenes at the end. I didn't, I just found this out like recently, but I watched my wedding episode and then I just stopped like when like my portion, like my wedding plays, mm -hmm. I didn't realize there's like more scenes at the end of the episode. Oh of me yeah, talking. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, there is people were tagging me in instagram stories of that scene of like something i said and yeah. i was like where is that from like wait you had no it, idea then, yeah so i went I back did. to go watch it trying to find those scenes and i didn't realize it was at the end i just like once my wedding portion like my portion of that episode was done i just turned it off i was like <laughs> you're like i don't want to see anyone else <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was like, I'm too traumatized just watching mine. I was yeah. like, I don't know for the rest. Yeah. Dead, Natalie. You would. Yeah, but I was so cringy uh, watching it. Oh, that's so funny. So that crazy. So I would funny. like tell jokes that would fall flat. I'm like, why did I even, <laughs> why did I say that? You know but, what's funny? Okay, so whenever oh, we do, no, whenever we do life updates, why is it that we always just talk about men? <laughs> I, I'm there's... never like, here's a new project I'm working on. <laughs> here's a new hobby I picked up. I think it's because we are thinking about last week's episode yeah. about mm -hmm. dating after reality TV. Because we were talking about it earlier. So like the only update I really have is like dating related, <laughs> I guess. Wait, yeah. so what happened with the guy? So 
he asked for a kiss. You said no. And then like, what was next? Not uh, nothing really. Uh, we were going to just head out soon. So he got my number and then I just dipped out of there. Like, bye. did he text you? Uh, no, but he added me on Instagram. <laughs> so I'm like, great. He knows now. <laughs> For someone who's not big on social media, he added you on Instagram. Like, well, please. I'm not gonna lie, I I asked him for his, so I followed him because I didn't. Oh, that is so, the move. You were yeah. like, let me show you my like, million followers. No, 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 no. I no, 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 no. I was like, let me have your Instagram. So I didn't give him mine, and then I followed. But what's funny is I'm still on his requested. Like he <gasps> hasn't approved it yet. <laughs> Ooh, that's sketch. Ooh, I know. But then he was like, I don't really get on Instagram much. So I was like, okay, that holds up. <laughs> okay. Or I would give it a week. It. I would give it a week. I'm because not giving what, it does any he attention. A, does he have a private, does he, he has a private profile, obviously, because mm -hmm. you're sitting as a request. Yes. I mean, what if he has like a girlfriend and he's like, he's like, oh, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta scramble. Can't, can't uh, can't show this girl that would be really awkward because he was there with like seven to eight other guys and the boss is one about of them guys. <laughs> guys look out for each other i mean like girls look out for each other but like same with guys you think so you think that they would allow him to be flirting like that and like and i literally i was like when he asked me the can i still kiss thing his friends were listening and i was like excuse me what'd you say and he goes you heard me and i that kind of turned me on a little <laughs> oh oh my god uh, I can't if he literally asked me that in if if I was in your shoes I get like so grossed out by those things I'd be like <laughs> can you shut the fuck up <laughs> that's probably what I would say so like are you so he didn't text you but you were vibing with him the yeah just guy? yeah I don't think it's gonna go anywhere it was just a good night you know I love those nights which just yeah just like I, a little like moment well, yeah and I'm not gonna lie to you I barely watched the game and I was like damn the game is over already <laughs> like, that's how we were just like <laughs> you know I feel like though like those little moments are just like ego boosters you know where you're like oh mm -hmm. I still got it <laughs> yeah what's going on in your world nothing honestly what do you mean <laughs> What do you mean? I'm just tired. Wait, let's, tell the, let's tell our listeners about the story from last night at the bar. What is, what's <laughs> the story from the bar? <laughs> Wait, we went out. We went out to this bar and we walk up or we were just sitting at our table and randomly one of Natalie's friends from college shows up. And he's like, Natalie, did he call you Natty Light? I think he did. <laughs> um, my like college nickname is Natty. So like Natty. no one, I never went by Natalie until um the show so everyone natty. in my life calls me natty well you call me natty too yeah i love it i love just calling not, you natty light it's not publicly um yeah no he yeah he called me natty light i think because i was I like think he did. i think he called me that in college and um he was with a group of guys i'm finishing the story for you because i'm yeah, like we're just trying to go with this <laughs> yeah and then um he was with a group of guys who also went to my college but i didn't know them very well and so when deep and i walked away from the group um, when we were on our way home, I texted my college guy friend and I was like, oh, is that guy single? And he goes, <laughs> I, I go asking for a friend. I was actually asking for you because I yeah, was which like, oh. I cannot believe <laughs> just because I said he was cute. And he's like, let me just try. <laughs> like, please. <laughs> actually, that's a good and, friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he was like, yeah. And then the guy uh, asked me out. That was it. <laughs> That was it. Cause I mean, the, the dude that Natalie tested, texted, the dude that Natalie texted thought that she was being coy and she was saying it for herself. Yeah. And, and was she funny. wasn't apparently, but she technically, I think she secretly was. And help me out here, guys, whoever, whoever was listening, please slide into Natalie's DMs and tell her to go on a date with this man. <laughs> Why? I think you should. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about him. Perfect. And First date to be, conversation. <laughs> to be honest, I probably won't. <laughs> That's why I was like, this is such like a whatever Bye. story. Like, I was like, I mean, I I don't know. He's also, there's some like things going on in his life. I think he's going through a divorce, mm -hmm. which is that's, and I've actually been in that so, situation before, like dating someone who was going through that. Yeah, that's right. And it's, yeah. And it's like, 
not saying that's like a deal breaker by any means, but I feel like their heads are in a different space. And the last yeah. thing they need is to be dating someone. Like I remember in that situation, I was just like, I had to see myself out. Cause I was like, I don't think like you should be trying to date while you're trying to figure out closing your situation. Your, yeah. this Yeah. This chapter. And the crazy and thing is she's still going through it. Yeah. A year and a half after we met. Yeah, divorce can get messy. Not that this person's is or the person you dated is, but, and also it's like, we're looking for something serious and it feels like somebody who's just now getting divorced may not be looking for anything serious right now or they might wait a little longer. So, you know, it just adds another layer. So I guess you're right. Fine. Don't slide in your DMs. Cancel the DM. Uh, yeah, funny. I mean, who knows? We'll just see. I mean, if we cross paths again, maybe. But I also think that he, like, you should go for it. Honestly, no. you know what I'm going to do? You, we just I'm talked going, about this. I am going to get a time and place and then send your ass on the date. Absolutely not. That's horrendous. That's worse than, I don't know, I was going to say blind date, but this doesn't even make sense. That's, like, terrible. That's Why is that terrible? Like, that's t- that's like saying he's on a blind date, but he doesn't know he's on a blind date. <laughs> you well, know what I mean? Guess what? Love is blind. So, I mean, <laughs> anything could happen. Wait, that's our episode today. Is love to blind? What a good plug, Matt. Oh my God, that what a, a good, good plug. plug. <laughs> but speaking about love is blind, can we talk about some love is blind news? Because it has been forever since we yeah. did that little segment of ours. I know nothing is happening in the love is blind world, but here we are. Let's go. Here we are. Well, there are some updates. The first one is Bartiz from season three hard launched his girlfriend last week on his Instagram. Um, according to People Magazine, his girlfriend's name is Kate Vanderberry, and she's based in Texas. I saw. So, I know that we've already talked about um, Bartiz on our podcast. You know, a few episodes ago, we talked about how he um, he revealed that he has um, a son, a baby boy, and he. Um, we recapped like what Bartiz said about his baby mama, um, like their relationship and how it's cordial. They're co-parenting. This woman, Kate Van D- Vanderberry, is not the baby mama. So no, not the baby mama. Yeah, I thought but... his baby's mama, mama. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just wanted to say that. I don't know why. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was like, who's other baby mama, mama? No, I'm just making some um, shit up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, that's I'm sweet. always really happy when someone from Love Is Blind finds love again. Yeah. So we're excited for him. You know Bartiz. I don't know Bartiz, yeah, but you know I, him. I really, yeah, I like Bartiz. We had fun in New York when we did that Love is Blind event together. I have nothing negative to say. Well, let me tell you the the other set of Love is Blind news. So in his interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Chris Colin, who is the creator of Love is Blind and the CEO of the production company Kinetic Content, who produced Love is Blind, he said he lost his mind watching all the issues <laughs> with season four's live reunion. Literally, I mean, I don't blame him, but I didn't know this. You know, he wasn't there during the live reunion. So they actually ended up using, it was Netflix's idea is what Chris mm-hmm. said. And that they ended up using a another production company yeah. to run the live I, reunion. So Chris was mm-hmm. at home just watching it. And then they, um, he was asked if the show would attempt a live reunion again. He said, possibly, but like, you know, a qu- quote unquote, he goes, possibly, but what is the benefit? A quick turnaround, sure, but we'd have to analyze if there's a real benefit. In my opinion, there's no real benefit. I do not approve of a live reunion because first of all, it takes so long to get to the meat of all of the issues and really talk about everything that's happened over the season. And if it's a live reunion, you're just rushed. It just doesn't make any sense. No, a hundred percent. A piece of me wishes our live reunion was live because I feel like someone would have felt the consequences of his actions and words Mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. But thinking back to our four hour reunion, I mean, like we said a lot of stuff that just was very uninteresting. Yeah. Like, and yeah, not to mention also, like, I feel like in the, yes, the person could be outed for the terrible things, but it also protects certain people and So it's like, it's give and take. So I'm just like, nah, no benefit to me. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. the only thing I could think about is like, it would have been so boring if they played our four hour reunion. We'd get asked questions and like someone would give like a yes or no answer. (laughs) And then they'd be like, okay, well on to the next. All right. Yeah, exactly. Like they keep pushing, but the person would be like, no, I'm not answering that. (laughs) Nope. No. And we're like, okay. 
Wait, our last our last uh, update on news. You guys, US Weekly reported on Natalie that she has officially <laughs> given up on dating reality stars post Love is Blind to Romance. <laughs> Natalie, that's news to me. Did you give up on reality TV stars? Well, we talked about it last week. And guys, you got the scoop first before <laughs> US Weekly. I'm done um, with dating reality TV show stars. <laughs> I feel like for some reason you're not, but you know, well, I'm sure one will come slithering back somehow, <laughs> some way. One's probably in your DMs right now. <laughs> uh, that's um, funny. But that was kind of it. I mean, look, we always say we're in off season. Not much is happening in the love is blind world, but I am really excited for Bartiz. Good for him for moving on. I hope he's happy. Hope there's never a live reunion. So I'm glad Chris kind of put it out there. It sounds like they probably won't attempt one again. Mm -hmm. um and yeah. that's the that's the solace i needed in my life <laughs> <laughs> please anyways that's it for love is blind news not much <laughs> is happening in the love is blind world i mean we always say we're in off season right now until the new season starts so season mm -hmm. five is coming in september um but this is very much going to be a love is blind episode because we're talking about because we're discussing is love truly blind <laughs> i know deep <laughs> answer I know, dude, I hate when people answer or ask me this question because uh, I just literally give the most diplomatic answer known to mankind. <laughs> and I'm just like, but I know, I know Deep D's answer because we've done so many interviews together. <laughs> yes. Can I, can I guess what you're going to say? Yes, can absolutely. I just say when someone asks you if love is truly blind, you go, <laughs> I think it depends. I think it can be. I think it depends on the person. <laughs> That's exactly it. You say because it like that all the time. I know exactly. I know. I look over at you every time we do interviews. I'm like, I know exactly what this bitch is about to say. <laughs> okay, what would I say? What would I say? What do I say? I don't know. I, I it goes in one ear and out the other. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I think you say I. Th you say yes. You say yes. I think love can be blind because I truly fell in love in the pods. Is what you say. Oh my gosh! I say that all the time. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Yeah, I say like, yeah, I think love can be blind because I fell in love with someone I didn't think <laughs> I would have never fall, fallen in love with in the real world. Yes. See, oh my gosh, we're so funny. Well, okay, episode over. Well, <laughs> yeah, but do you want to hear our real answers today? Because that's what we're going to do. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, this, this podcast <laughs> oh is unhinged and unfiltered. So let me tell you what I really think. Is love truly blind? <laughs> Oh man, I don't honestly, I'm gonna have to say nope. <laughs> okay, you know, I it was thinking be. about That's it. Good. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and I also think my answer is no. Yeah, right? Yeah, I feel like couples get lucky on this show and they found compatibility and they are truly lucky. But honestly, I think we were in such a bubble, right? We were in such a bubble mm -hmm. and the emotions were just so high and it was all so exciting. But truly, can you fall in love with somebody like that quickly? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. At first, like right when the show came out, because I was still in this weird place with my ex, mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, of course he was blind. Like I fell in love with him. But thinking more clearly two years since we filmed, I'm like, I don't think. I don't think it was. I think that I really liked him, like in mm -hmm. the pods. Right. But do I think I fell in love with him? No. Yeah. I don't think, and can I be honest? I don't think any of us fell in love. I think we just like strongly liked. Exactly. Like our partners. Yes, or and had hope. We just wanted, not, not us, or some people just wanted screen time and kind of proposed just to go through it. But yeah. um, when Shane proposed to me, like, do I think he loved me? And do I think I loved him? No, I think it was just a really strong sense of like, like and excitement. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we are like, oh, my gosh, we're about to get engaged. <laughs> Weirdly, I it takes so long for me to say I love you to somebody because I'm just like, I don't know, it's hard for me to I don't know if it's like hard for me to express emotion, or it's because it just takes a long time for me to fall. <laughs> but whatever the case is, I do not think I was in love in the pods at all. I just saw so much potential. And I was like, Oh, my gosh, like this could be my person because of the similarities. But you're right, like, it's like, you're in such a 
the environment creates like a space where you think that you are because everyone else around you is falling in love and you're yeah. like oh my god I kind of felt odd can I be honest when we were in the pods I felt odd that I wasn't saying I love you to my person and everyone else was kind of like oh my god I'm head over heels I'm in love you know what I mean oh my god I mean that was me I I told I told Shane that I loved him like on day six or seven and I actually I believed it at the time I was like I like love you but looking back on it now no I think I was just like so excited I liked him a lot but mm -hmm. I guess I just liked what I was feeling at the time yes like it, exactly and you get so bought in in the moment like you were like well this has worked for season one because you know we're season two so mm -hmm. um but I don't I really don't think and I've I've talked about this with the rest of our cast like did we all fall in love no yeah like looking back yeah, it's on interesting. it all now. do you think yeah. do you think that the pods worked it depends on if the people in the pods are like being truthful and vulnerable there have been moments like i've gone on pod dates with other men where they're mm -hmm. just lying like they yeah. lie about their salary they lie about their beliefs like this straight up happened like i had a guy who just really like put up a facade and it which is very easy to do when mm -hmm. you know you are you just hear their voice you know yeah. like they could tell if you are dating a liar in there like you're mm -hmm. fucked <laughs> yeah absolutely because no one around you is going to tell you that they're lying unless you collaborate yeah. your stories with like other women in the pods but yeah seriously it's so easy to put your best foot forward and also especially you're able on TV. yes especially on tv like there's this mm -hmm. there's like secondary motive to say good things about yourself and like maybe lie to make yourself look better because you're on a tv show absolutely so you like portray the version of you that you want to be but it's like when you come out into real life, it's like that version of you is just something that you're aspiring to be, but you're not there yet, you know? And so, yeah, yeah. the real life you and the pod you is so different. But I guess that's like yeah. normal with any dating, right? I get it. But for sure. But it's like in the pods, I think it's different because you're falling in love without having the time to like catch someone in a lie or. Mm -hmm. you know the time to really really get someone your jokes just going off their words i mean there were instances in the pods where seriously like i had a guy lie about what college he went to um about Wild. the salary he made when we were talking about finances and it's so crazy because he was vulnerable about other things about like growing up some like traumatic things that happened in his childhood and like mm -hmm. mental health but he lied about like who he was in that moment he goes like he like made himself to be like a successful business person when he wasn't and i'm like yeah. why yeah why it's because it stems that? it stems from their insecurities of course because when you're in that bubble and it's kind of like a competition if you really think about it it is a competition yeah. and so you're comparing yourself to other people who are successful so you're like i'm gonna up the game in my own head <laughs> you know what i mean and somehow it's justified but it's so crazy because I really do think um, it's it's tough, like when even the marriages that came out of our season, it's tough because they don't really know who both of the, each other is, right? When they're starting the relationship, because to truly know somebody, I think you have to go through life with them. You have to see how they handle stress. If like something traumatic happens in their life, how do they handle that? If, you know, they're rewarded with something, like how do they share their happiness? There's just like so many things I think that you go through. Like I was talking to you about this, like even with my ex of six years, he cheated on me and did all these things and kept secrets from me. And I thought I really knew somebody and it was six years into our relationship and it's still, I didn't know who they were. So it's like, who are you when no one's looking, right? Like I yeah. truly felt like I didn't know that person still six years yeah. later. So with this experience, it's interesting. Yeah. But, I'm not saying that it doesn't work though. I think that yeah. even if you don't fall fully in love with someone, you could still like, you know, Grow find someone. No, well, you could still find someone great. Like if they're not yeah. lying to you and you guys are really being vulnerable in the pods, like you could, mm -hmm. you could find someone. I think though, like seven days to fall in love with someone is like really quick, but that's just yeah. my own opinion. I won't lie. I still think that the experiment does work in that 
Um, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes in terms of who actually is part of the cast. So what we were told is that on the other side, so the, the 15 men, so we obviously had 15 women on our side and then there's 15 men that we date. There's supposedly like four, five, six compatible matches. So that's why mm-hmm. like the women kind of have similar ish personalities um, along with the men as well, because they're supposed to be like paper matches on the other side. So mm-hmm. deep D and I supposedly had like four to six potential matches. Um, that's crazy. And, and again, matches based on like our preferences of men, um, whether that's physical or like personality wise, but also, you know, what we need. Like if I was like, I want someone who makes X amount of money, there was probably someone who made X amount of money on the other side. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately for me, I didn't end up with my uh, one of my paper matches, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's like those types of things that like make it work. Like if you yes. find someone who like is your compatible with you personality wise is also matches your physical preferences. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is that even if somebody is a match for you on paper, personality traits and your mannerisms and your habits, all of those things come into play. So it's like, it doesn't matter if someone is your perfect match on paper, because literally it's, you are you compatible in real life, you know? And that's the biggest obstacle. But I, I do think that it, it can work. I just think that only a few lucky people get to experience it. I in agree. my opinion. When Shake proposed to you, did you have any like qualms about saying yes? Like, were you hesitant to say yes? No, because I'm the type of person where I trust easily. And even though there was, it was kind of a rocky road because I was like, oh my gosh, you know, why is there's, there's like small little obstacles along the way in our journey of getting engaged. And, but I truly did think that he was very (laughs) self-aware. And I don't know why. Yeah, because of our conversations. We had such good conversations and like addressed all the issues up front. And I think that created like a strong bond. And weirdly, I knew in my head, I was like, my parents are going to love him. He's Indian. He's a vet, which I love animals. So I was just like, this is going to work. I was just in my head. I was like, very, very hopeful. Did you have any qualms when Shane proposed to you in the pods? No, at that time I was like so confident in that relationship because I liked him so much. I didn't start having like regrets or hesitations until we got to Mexico. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I, well, I, people don't know this, but I actually ended my engagement um, on our last day in Mexico because I was just like, we are not like a good fit. Like it's, I was like, send us home. And then Shane asked for a second chance. Yeah. And then um, we talked for like a day or two and I was like, okay, like, let's see if we could make this work. Do you think, but- do you think part of your reasoning for that was because you were kind of just overwhelmed with everything happening and not just the relationship? Like, that's why I ended it in Mexico. Because mm-hmm. it, no. like, it was an intense time, you know, with like cameras all around us, all of that, you know? No, it was that incident, which I won't get into, that happened off camera. Okay. But that so was like was- kind of my first like, wait, like what, like this doesn't feel right or we're not like compatible. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I remember being like, like we need to end our engagement and like stop filming. Like we're not going to make it. We could have been a Zach Irina Bliss, but. uh, (laughs) That would have been an interesting. uh, I know. That would have been a very interesting story. (laughs) But. The next day we had to stay in the same hotel room because we were getting tested for COVID, like after Mm -hmm. coming back from Mexico, um, when we returned back to Chicago. And so they had us isolated and then him and I like talked and he's like, can we just like try once more? I also think that there was like this pressure of trying to make it work because there was like cameras and because it was a TV show Mm -hmm. that I'm like, well, maybe this could be a really like look at Lauren and Cameron. It's like, maybe if we push through, like we could find like a spark or like make it work. And like, he 
I knew that he like loved me so much or at the time thought like he loved me so much that I, I was like, okay, let's just like go with it. And then yeah. it ultimately got to a place like back in Chicago where I was like, okay, we're all in. Like we love each other. Yeah. We're going to get married. Like let's make this work. But looking back on it, a piece of me, did I think that because like, did I want to make it work because of like the, like, because what I saw in season one with Lauren and Cameron, like, yeah, did I think like, like you wanted that fairy tale love story? Yeah, like, like the fairy tale reality. love story. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Was there a portion of that? A hundred percent. Which I hate saying, but it's the truth. Yeah, and I think that's exactly why I jumped into a relationship with Kyle too, is because I truly wish I could have just never gotten in a relationship with him because, um. Yeah. I think it was like the pressure of everything and it's like I what what if this is my person and I don't give it a chance and I regret it that was kind of my mentality towards it but I have a, I have a question for you do you think that love is enough no I said it on the show I was like sometimes love you isn't did? enough <laughs> oh you did <laughs> yeah I said it on my wedding I think I was go love just isn't enough <laughs> yeah it really isn't and um, I honestly no, truly not. think that mm -hmm. yeah I mean I I don't I think that there ha there's more to like, like when it comes to marriage, you mean mm -hmm. relationships, yeah, there has to, yeah, not I even just a marriage has to be more like that guy. I, uh, my boyfriend from Portugal, like he is mm -hmm. like an adrenaline junkie and he had, he wanted like a different life than I envisioned. Like he wants to live on a cattle farm and like, you know, just like he was a cliff diver and like, he wanted to do that stuff. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I like love you, but it's just I I, I couldn't do like that. I couldn't. I'm yeah. not going to live on a farm. Yeah, I I'm going to live in the suburbs of Chicago forever. <laughs> <laughs> in the suburbs of Chicago. I was like, I'm Dude, a suburban girl. It is. It is so true, though. It's like I think sometimes for me, like even in that six year relationship, I was like, oh my god, but I've been I put in so many years already into this relationship, like, and I love this person. I'm gonna try to stick it out, but honestly, it's about compatibility for sure. And yeah, it's just you have to wake up and choose that person every single day, and yeah. love just is not enough. That's why when I feel yeah. like I used to get so butt hurt over people when like relationships ended or something and i used to be like or like I, a fling doesn't turn into a relationship or something like that because i'd be like wait what's going on like and you take it so personally but yeah. it's really just about compatibility i'm like thank you for not wasting my time i appreciate that <laughs> yeah when i i was the same way like when i was in my early 20s i get hurt when like i was dating someone when they'd be like oh i don't really see it going anywhere and i'd be like what <laughs> excuse but yeah, me now, but now i like when those things happen i'm like oh it was just like it wasn't meant to be yeah. like obviously i want to be with someone that chooses me every day and like vice versa okay even though this even though the whole love is blind experiment didn't work for us like i don't want it to seem like we are like downplaying the connections of like the couples that got married on our season, even though ultimately they didn't work out either. But I do think that it's really hard to fall in love within um, those six weeks and mm -hmm. get married. Like, yeah. I think you're taking like a leap of faith and sometimes it works. Yes. Like it has with the couples who are together from the other seasons. Mm -hmm. But I think that it, it is more of like finding your lucky match versus the experiment mm -hmm. actually working. Yeah, I agree. And you know what's funny is um, people will come up to me and be like, or not people come up to me. I'll read comments and things like that, where it's like this season, our season, season two, they'd be like, oh my gosh, season two was such a failure. And I hate reading those comments because I'm like, no, actually season two taught you about breakups and that sometimes relationships don't work and you have to be strong enough to be able to leave something that is no longer serving you you know and i think that's what our season taught people is that breaking up is a part of life and it teaches you so much more sometimes than the successful relationships you know i remember when the two divorces from our season were announced and people are like what a fail of a season i was like actually I see it as a success that these couples mm -hmm. didn't stay together for the public yes. or, you know, like, and pretended because quite honestly, yes, that happens. Not saying that people like pretend to be in relationships, but it's not this like 
great, amazing thing that you see on social media. Yeah, um, exactly. And if anything, like Ayana and Danielle, like they chose themselves, they chose mm -hmm. their happiness instead of giving into public pressure because let's, I hate talking. I'm not trying to talk for Ayana, but she has been very public with this. It was very hard for her when she mm -hmm. announced her divorce and people are like, you guys should get back together. Like, oh my gosh, what? Like why? And I was like, what is the fuck is wrong with people? Yeah. But I remember she talked about this in, I think on her podcast or another interview about like the public pressure to stay together. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. you know what? I'm glad you didn't give in and you like thought about yourself and not what people strangers mm -hmm. out there thought, but it is a huge pressure. If you have like millions of people in your DMS or in your comments talking about how like, Whoa, but we loved you guys on the show. Like, mm -hmm. I can't believe you guys are divorcing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you feel like you're letting down someone. Oh, hundred percent. You feel like you're disappointing people yeah. and it's so hard. Like divorce is hard in general, but then when you add that added layer of the public and all of their opinions and without them knowing the full story too, it just makes it so much harder. And I just have to commend them on their strength for doing that. But yeah, yeah that's exactly what our season taught you is that, you know, for people out there that are staying in relationships, not because of the public, but for their own like pressures that exist in their own worlds, I highly challenge you to, you know, look at, look at your relationships and think about yourself, put yourself first. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just important to do that and to reassess. Yeah. 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 But I think after everything, yeah. I mean, I think both our answers are no, if love is truly blind. I'm um, sure all the successful couples out there are like, yes, yes. Love can be blind. Of course. Of yes. Course. And it's so true. It can be, but, but from our perspective. Yeah. A, I think that's a no. <laughs> I think you could really, really like someone in those pods, but can you really fall in love? No, not not from what I experienced and not what I've been through and not what I know, you know, behind the scenes from across the seasons. I think yeah. that, um, I think you can try to make it work if the cameras weren't there, but the cameras also add another layer of like pressure and people trying to put their best foot forward and also trying to like pretend they have this like fairy tale love when it's not always the case. No. And you know what? It's like, it truly, your relationship starts when the cameras go down, you know, that's yeah. when the test really begins. It's like, okay, here you go. Now let's see how you're going to do, you know? Yeah. And that's really the true test. So maybe I'm going back to my answer of it can work. It, it depends on the person. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's a very lucky draw if it does 100%. work for, yeah. for someone. But what I do love about the experiment is that you'll never experience something like the pods. Like we will yeah. never go through that where you can just like really, really like someone by, mm -hmm. you know, like the conversations you have with them. Yes. Like, when will that ever happen? I know. Where you could and it literally be, you could look any certain way, but no, looking back on it all, does physical factor play a part? Like, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I do have to say that the experience ta taught me so much, not just about myself, but like how I approach dating. And I think my mindset yeah. is so different now. And I'm just not going to dilly dally anymore because that those like date that dating period really was like a pressure cooker. And it's like taught me approach oh dating God. the same way in real life because why are you wasting time you know ask those hard questions right off the bat and it will yeah. really allow you to weed out you know the process okay well anyways that was our true true answer after all those fake answers i gave for the last year and a half where i'm like <laughs> yes love is blind <laughs> it was a it was a summarized answer for us in our interviews. I would love to hear from our listeners, though, honestly, on this topic. Like, do you guys think that love is blind? I would love to know. Send us your comments. Send us your reactions to this episode because I am truly intrigued. But uh, send it to our Instagram page at Out of the Pods. And make sure you leave a review and subscribe. See you next Monday. Bye.